him up. So I have one question to ask before I begin, because it's something I got to know. Who is the wisest person in the room this morning? I, I'll wait. I'll wait. Wait. Just raise your hand. You raising your hand's fine. Okay, we begin. Because in today's reading of James, he tells us that there's a couple kinds of wisdoms. Who knew? He speaks of an earthly wisdom and a heavenly wisdom. These wisdoms are what we experience inside our minds, and they guide our actions. Maybe some of us are aware of it, but maybe some of us are not. These wisdoms most certainly can be learned, but I believe what James is talking about today are wisdoms that define and make up who you are. They are wisdoms that guide our actions. They're wisdoms that guide what we do with our lives. They're wisdoms we use with each other and the words we use with each other and the emotions that we experience to guide those words. He describes earthly wisdom, and he says that earthly wisdom starts with self-interest, wisdom for decisions that are about us and about what happens to us, us being the central theme there. It affects how we view the world and how we make others feel. It's a wisdom that tells us what we desire and want. It makes us covet things that our neighbors have, things that we think we should have. It can push us to judge the lives of others and envy their happiness and good fortune. The fruit of this kind of wisdom is often bitterness, envy, and self-loathing. It is sensual and often demonic, according to James. The wisdom this wisdom can cause people to fight with each other, to tear down each other, and to create chaos. Do you know any people or situations that fit this description? I bet you do. James then goes on to tell us about heavenly wisdom. He says that heavenly wisdom starts with God's heart and love. And you know it when you see it because it's pure, it's gentle, it's willing to yield, and it's full of mercy. Heavenly wisdom demonst is demonstrated not only by how we think, but how we act. People demonstrating this heavenly wisdom speak kindly. They act gently. They are the peacemakers. Do you know anybody like that? I bet you do. When Vicar Joan asked me to speak today, I had a choice of what I wanted to speak on. I could sp have spoken on the Old Testament reading, the Psalm, the Gospel, or the Epistle. I didn't need to think twice about that. It had to be James. <clears throat> I have always been drawn to the book of James, ever since I read it in the Education for Ministry course that I took here at the church. I loved it because James believed in action, not just thinking, but by doing something about life, be it a physical action or sometimes a mindful action. Now, having faith is absolutely necessary as a person of God, but demonstrating that faith in your actions is holy. Why, last week, Deacon Grace challenged us to do something. She said, she challenged us to volunteer for loaves and fishes, to vote, maybe help at the polls. How about visit somebody in a nursing home? Make a positive change in the world, even so small. James, in this reading, challenges people to look at their lives. He invites you to examine your wisdom. Where do your thoughts and actions come from? Which wisdom do they come from? Reflect on your life and pray on it. No one else can do that for you. It is your life 
in your actions governed by what you want or by what you think you want or by what others want for you. A heavenly wise life is one that is driven by consistent godly choices that are reflected in the things you do. One life, a life that is guided by faith, a trust in Jesus. Jesus says that this faith is invisible. Does a person with a lot of faith look different than a person with very little faith? Does a person with a lot of wisdom look any different physically to a person with very little wisdom? Physical appearances will often fool you. We have all seen people use bad wisdom and get away with things. The fruits of those actions, though, will produce disorder and evil. There is a turmoil that comes from inside when you don't have what you desire and what you think you deserve. There you will find envy and selfish ambition. We show who we are and our wisdom by our deeds. In fact, those deeds are so important that James says faith without deeds is dead. It is important, of course, to find God in mindful things like prayer and meditation. But wouldn't it be wise to reflect on that time and turn those thoughts into actions? The heavenly wisdom James speaks of, of gives us the ability to love people, all people. Is it possible to forgive and love your enemies? Well, isn't that what Jesus taught us to do? There's a prayer that I use quite often in my life when I encounter a situation of resentment or anger with people, places, or things. I pray this, bless them, change me. Bless them, change me. As Bishop Michael Curry wrote, love is the way. And James shows us this in what he says Jesus taught. Be kindly in a loving way, serve the poor, and be wholly devoted to God. God will grant heavenly wisdom to those who seek it. If you move towards God, he will move towards you. I have seen this myself on many occasions. I have been a member of Alcoholics Anonymous for 37 years. And I've seen people, I've seen people move towards God in the lowest parts of their life when they had nowhere else to turn. And I've seen God move into their lives and perform miracles. I have experienced one of those miracles. I am one of those miracles. May you seek heavenly wisdom. May you move closer to God. And may you find the courage to do what you thought was impossible and change your world. Amen.